Hello and welcome to the third edition of the cosmetic repairs on the Midwest Radio 61916. Uh, and this is the uh, what I plan to put on the front of the drawer the Midwest logo and the Symphony Grand for 1949 and these fonts and this placard here or whatever you want to call it coat of arms came right out of the catalog and as I said earlier I was going to try it on a finished piece and this is just a piece of scrap that I stained through some stain on I'm not real happy with the look of that uh, this side looks pretty good but that means I'd have to do the drawer in like a maple instead of uh, making it match the rest of the cabinet. So instead of doing that, I shrunk it down to a much smaller size where it'll fit on a two by four inch piece of brass. And I have gone ahead and ordered the uh, 1064 nanometer or 1064 nanometer laser head for this unit. And that was fairly pricey, but with it I'll be able to engrave stainless steel. I'll be able to do this on stainless, copper, brass, aluminum, just about anything like that. The 1064 won't burn wood, or not very well anyway. But it will work very well on metal, so I've got that head on order. That'll be here, actually it should be here tomorrow with any luck and I can do a test burn but the, you know again I shrunk this down and we'll put that on a brass or a copper plate which will affix to the front of the drawer with the logo in the Symphony Grand when I burn this one I did it a hundred percent power this is a three-quarter inch piece of pine and that is almost a quarter of an inch deep uh, two more burns you know, two more passes, I could have gone through this three-quarter inch, which is just amazes me that uh, it's got that kind of power behind it. Uh, at any rate, I think that's what I'm going to do. In fact, I went up in the barn today and found some of my scrap copper, and I've got a good-sized piece here that I will do the test burn on. I may even end up cutting a piece out of here. I've got a metal shear up in the barn. We'll see how it looks compared to the brass or how it compares to the handles. Oh, and speaking of that, uh, let me move the camera here. You remember when I repaired the spindle for the phonograph that in the process of filing everything down, a lot of the copper plating, or not a lot of it, some of the copper plating became damaged. So what I'm doing here is replating the spindle for the phonograph. I've got a, an old power supply here that I've yanked out of the back corner rather than pull my good one off the bench. And we have a bucket of lukewarm water, about half full, about three quarters of a cup of baking soda, uh, just a small teaspoon of salt to make the water a little more conductive and two pieces of copper pipe. The copper pipe connects to your positive electrode and the work piece down here connects to the negative electrode and we're only running about five volts. But this is beginning to, where the brass is, is beginning to take copper and the places where I scratch it up with a file are beginning to take copper. And I'll just leave this in here for a few hours. It'll take a while, but this eventually will be fully copper plated again. You'll never know it had any damage on it. And my plan right now outside uh, in 99% IPA in my ultrasonic cleaner, I have the drawer poles are out there and I'm gonna let those run for an hour or two in the ultrasonic cleaner to give them a deep clean. I'll buff them up a little bit and I'll put them in here as well and give them just a 
flash coat of copper on top of what's left of the brass and polish those up and they should look pretty good. I originally had said I was going to do brass plating but you have to have a cyanide solution to do real brass plating. Brass is basically copper and zinc I think it is and if you don't have a an arsenic solution the two alloy the alloy comes apart and it just makes a mess. Uh, I hope I'm explaining that correctly. But it takes special chemicals, chemistry that I don't want to play with. But simple baking soda, a little bit of electricity, I'll be able to put a little bit of copper back on top of the uh, whatever is left of the brass and whatever is bare steel will come back. And I'll polish those up and they should look fine. Those of you who have been watching me for a while will remember when I did the ICO VTVM. And those who haven't seen it, you can go back and find that video. The chassis in that had been, or had received a lot of uh, battery damage. The battery had leaked and it corroded all of the uh, plating on the chassis. And I had glass beaded that and did the same process here, but instead of using copper, I used some uh, zinc sheet, and I replated the chassis in zinc, and you can go back and take a look at that video. It came out beautifully when it was done. It's not fast, but you know, we're not in a hurry. We'll just let this sit for a few hours. It'll pick up some copper. We'll polish it up, and it should look pretty decent, and I'll do the same thing with the drawer pulls. After they've cleaned up, I'll throw them in this solution. Let them sit for a few hours. I could even let this go overnight. It won't hurt it. <clears throat> and buff it up in the morning. So, I'll stop here. For you, it'll just be a couple seconds, and you'll see what this looks like after I take it out. Okay, we've pulled this out of the bath and thrown the drawer pulls in there. Took those out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Please excuse the dehumidifier running in the background. It was 85 today with a lot of humidity. It looks like this is all in frame, I hope. I'm busy looking at it and not watching where the camera is here. Looks like everything's been coated with copper. And uh, let's see what we've got. Dry this off. Oh, where's my rag? There it is. Start cleaning this up and see if it's taken. Oh, yeah. It's going to come out of the bath looking pretty grody. There's a lot of uh, contaminants in there. The copper pipe is not pure, it's not 100%, 99% or whatever it is. But uh, you get enough of the copper that comes off the pipes. I don't know if you can see how that's coming out or not. But that's polishing right up. I think this is going to be pretty decent looking at this point. Unless you look really close, you'll never know. This was broken. If you haven't picked yourself up a set of these vice jaws, these are magnetic. Now I've got aluminum ones, I've got brass or copper ones, uh, but these soft plastic ones are just awesome. Non-scratch. 
Yeah, that's cleaning up nicely. Yeah, it's all got a layer of copper on it. If you look really, really close, you can see where it's been brazed, but a casual observer will never notice. Oop, almost dropped it. I'm not squeezing it too hard here because I don't want to stress that place where it's been brazed. Oh yeah, that's coming out nice. That's looking beautiful. Polish a little more right there. In fact, I can probably use this guy. No more bare steel. All completely copper plated. Now this was in there for a couple of hours. It might go a little faster if you dump some vinegar in there. I don't know. I'm not a chemist. But uh, the baking soda seems to do a pretty decent job. And there you have it. I'll do the same thing to the uh, the drawer pulls and we'll take a look at those. Okay, the drawer pulls came out pretty good. I didn't leave them in there long. It was just a few areas where there was some pitting or some corrosion. And I just used the copper to fill it in. The brass actually was in better shape than I thought underneath of the uh, finish that they'd sprayed over the top of it. They'll need a final clean just before I put them on the cabinet and then I'll give everything a coat of clear lacquer so that they don't uh, oxidize but I'll wait until just before they go on there give them a final polish mount them up and then spray everything with clear lacquer so that everything's protected that'll be down the road after I build uh, the drawer and get the turntable mounted and start doing the cabinet work so that'll be a while and again, I don't know if I'm going to get to that before I head out to Thailand this year. I have got so much going on. And a little spot right there I could buff up some more. The copper is filled in. Any areas or most of the areas is a little spot right there where there was some corrosion but at least it's got a copper color to it now it won't be noticeable these actually came out pretty good I'm surprised they've uh, cleaned up nicely the coppers filled in all the worn areas matches very well. This thing, you can see a little bit of more copper color there, but they don't look bad at all. I think those are going to pass. So that's it for this one. Short and sweet. Just wanted to keep you up to date on what I was doing to uh, some of the hardware. I don't know about the drawer hinges. I think I might leave those a dark color so that they're not as noticeable on the door hinges and, and the slides inside. You don't want those to stand out as much as the poles. And again, they'll get a final clean, a final buff just before... Oh, there's a spot there I missed. A final buff just before I put them in there. And a coat of clear. my toothbrush I'm using my best toothbrush just kidding okay we're gonna call that done for now we'll dip these in uh, I might run these through the ultrasonic cleaner again just to get all the polishing compound out of there afterwards just before I clear uh, clear coat them just to make sure there's no oil or anything 
keeping the lacquer from sticking. And uh, don't need to buff up the back side. But that'll be mounted against the drawer. Okay, that's it. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, don't be afraid to try some of the plating. It really isn't very hard to do. All you need is a little power supply, a little bit of baking soda, and a bucket, and some sacrificial pieces of copper pipe. Or if you're doing a chassis, some you can buy zinc sheet at the home improvement store. And uh, plate your own radio chassis. They come out pretty good. Go back and take a look at that ICO uh, video where I redo the chassis on that. Uh, if I can think of it, when I edit this, I'll dig up the uh, the link, put it down below in the doobly do. Yeah, that area could have stood a little bit longer in the tank. But uh, let's see here. A little more goop on there. There we go. That's polishing up now. Just need a little more abrasive. That blended right in. Beautiful. Yeah, completely it's invisible now. I can't even see where they were. Okay, be well, we'll see you soon, bye. Okay, this is the UV laser head, and I had tried the other laser head, the one that I did all the wood burning with on here, and it didn't even mark this copper. Maybe the 20 or the 40 watt head would, but this one had no problem at all you can feel it. It's not very deep. I think it's more of an oxidation on the surface, but uh, it clearly marks this copper without too much of a problem, or without any problem at all, actually. However, it isn't extremely high contrast. It looks pretty good, don't get me wrong. It looks very decent here, and I don't know how the camera is doing with it. It looks pretty decent. But I also have on order something called Cercoat. Actually, it's not the brand name Cercoat, but it's the same pr type of product. You spray on, and it, when the laser hits it, it fuses into the surface and gives you a much darker, blacker, high contrast uh, laser etch. That'll be in in a day or two, and we'll add that as well. We'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two and see how they look. I saw a guy do it on stainless steel and it looked like it had been silk screened with black paint. It looked just awesome when he got done. He did the stainless bare and then he did the stainless with the Cercoat, C-E-R-C-O-A-T. And he seemed to think it was some kind of powdered ceramic or glass that was fused to the surface. You wash the rest off when you're done. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case or not, but it's specifically designed for laser etching with diode lasers on uh, metallic surfaces. But uh, this shows you, this gives you a pretty good example of what the laser head will do on copper. And we'll uh, hold off releasing this video until that comes in and we'll do another burn. Okay, it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, I've been busy with another project down here. I've had some requests for more 10 buck test bench videos. So I've been doing some improvements down here in the basement. I moved the 10 buck test bench down here and put up a new room, if you will. It's not complete yet. I haven't got all the sheetrock up and haven't got all the painting done. But with Jip coming over here from Thailand, Hopefully, when I return next year, I want to give her a couple of rooms to do her sewing and 
so she has some craft space to work and so I moved everything from upstairs to down here now back to the laser I've tried several things this piece of copper is looking pretty nasty at this point but I don't know if it's obvious try to get over here in a better light I've got to work on the lighting down here I've been uh, playing wow this is bad 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 there we go this is with the Cerakote this was just regular paint I tried spraying regular paint on here that's a pain in the ass to get off because you gotta use a solvent the Cerakote type stuff washes off with water and you can see how much darker that is so that stuff works fairly well over here we have our original original burns reflections down here are terrible on this but that uh, coating definitely <coughs> darkens up the etching and while I was at it I did a few other things this is a piece of black anodized aluminum and used nothing on it but the infrared laser and boy it did a beautiful job of engraving on the black anodized it just that just pops really looks great and I had a scrap piece of marble my sister's birthday is coming up she passed away back in 2021 and we're trying to come up with a memorial so I did a grayscale etching on a piece of marble just as an experiment using that same Cerakote stuff and this was an old piece of scrap that was laying out in the backyard so it's stained and dirty but I wanted to see how it was going to work so my sisters picked up a piece of my other sisters picked up a piece of marble and uh, we'll redo this so that's what the coating stuff looks like and we're really going to end this one this time let's call this the end uh, boy if you have black anodized stuff you want to mark up it's fantastic uh, pick up some of that spray coating the difference I don't know how it looks in the camera but the difference to the eye is it's remarkable between that and this one down here thanks for watching uh, hope somebody got a few tips learned something if you've got any better ideas pass them along down there in the doobly-doo and uh, we'll get another one out as soon as we can find some time here until then take care bye bye